If you need to study English or to improve your English, but you have problems being consistent, this video is for you. Coming up. Hey student, I am Teacher Pricks and I'm going to help you talk to anyone, anywhere, anytime in English. Thank you so much for watching this lesson. Make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss any of my weekly videos. Now, being consistent is important. And if you want to unlock your English fluency, become a confident English speaker, improve vocabulary, comprehension, well, you need to be consistent. But I understand it can be difficult. That's why in this video, I'm going to give you three important tips and maybe a bonus tip <laughs> to help you be more consistent with your English practice so that you can unlock your English fluency. So let's go to tip number one, scale back. Now, this is a phrasal verb, okay? To scale back means to reduce or to make a reduction in the level of activity, numbers, you name it. So the first tip is connected with reduction. If you are becoming inconsistent, if you're having problems is staying consistent with your English practice, you are probably doing too much. And as a result, you have the opposite effect you want. You start to feel stressed, you start to feel under pressure, you start to feel like, oh, I can't do this. There's too much for me to do. I don't have time or I don't understand the information. So you begin to study less and less and you stop for a week. You stop for two weeks. So it's important that you understand how often you study and for how long. And with that in mind, scale back. I would rather my students study it twice a week consistently twice a week, every week for 40 minutes, and that's it. Instead of studying a lot, but inconsistently. That's why scaling back is important if you're having problems being consistent with your practice. And this can happen to anyone. So analyze what you were doing before. Oh, were you studying every day for two hours, for three hours? Were you trying to watch many TV shows or listen to many podcasts or read too much? Well, scale back. Believe me when I say it. If you want to get back on track and becoming consistent with your English practice, less is more. <laughs> Tip number two. Meet halfway. Oh, there's even a song. Can you meet me halfway? <laughs> now, guys, um, if you're studying something that is either extremely difficult or extremely easy, you will become inconsistent. Okay? Let's analyze the two scenarios. If something is too difficult, you will feel demotivated, discouraged, Oh, this lesson is too hard. And with time, your brain, we will start to have very negative reaction, a very negative reaction every time you sit down to study because you're trying too hard. You're doing something that is too difficult. But we also need to analyze the other scenario. Ah, this is easy. A new phrase over, a new adjective, another lesson, piece of cake. Then you will start to get lazy. Because we are human beings and humans by nature love a challenge. So if you're doing something that is too easy, you will also lose motivation. You will become inconsistent with your practice. I imagine that if you're watching this video, it means you are probably a pre-intermediate speaker or an intermediate speaker. So it's time to review the level of difficulty of your practice, because that will determine how consistent you become with your English routine, okay? So analyze what you do with vocabulary, with listening comprehension, grammar, okay? The practice you have, is it too easy or too difficult that you feel like your head is going to explode? What is the feeling you have? What's the, the emotion you feel when you finish your practice. Ah, too easy. Oh my God, my head hurts. I need, I need, a, I need to sleep. So how do you feel? 
So if it's too difficult, it's bad. If it's too easy, it's bad. Okay, so balance. Less is more, as we talked about in tip number one. And here, meet halfway, okay? Don't do something too hard, but don't do something that is too easy. Otherwise, it'll be difficult to stay consistent. Now, before I give you tip number three, make sure to subscribe to my channel because every week I'm here with a new lesson to help you unlock your English fluency. If you have already subscribed, well, thank you very much. Make sure to share this video with your friends. Now, tip number three. Combine skills, yes, you know, it's important that you work smart, especially if you are scaling back, if you are reducing the number of activities you do. So, you need to work well with the time you have to practice your English consistently. So, let's say you decide to study three times a week. My students in my academy, my BSA, they have a schedule recommendation. And there they have recommendations of three times a week or five times a week, extra activities if they have time. But if they're very busy, three times a week. And then the recommendations I give to help them study the modules inside the academy is, well, you will combine these skills. So let's say you're going to study three times a week then maybe on day one, you can combine listening and vocabulary. On day two, you can combine speaking and reading. On day three, you can combine vocabulary and speaking. Then on the following week, you can combine grammar and speaking, reading and grammar, speaking and writing. So that way, you will maximize your time, you will keep your practice interesting, and you will always focus on at least two different skills. Depending on how much time you have available, you can even make more combinations. You can combine three skills. It depends on how much time you have available. And take tip number one into consideration because if you're having problems being consistent, scale back. Less is more. Okay? So, remember that. You don't need to study for hours, especially if you're having problems being consistent. Okay? In my academy, I have students who are very busy. And the reason why they join the academy is to have a step-by-step -step process to help them become more consistent. And the first piece of advice I give them is, hey, less is more, follow the habits, follow the style of the program. You don't need to go crazy and try to do everything and study for hours. You need to respect your busy life. So we need to analyze that, okay? Now, I do have a bonus tip. Yes, it's important, okay? I am a master practitioner of neurolinguistic programming. And basically, I took the certification because in the learning process, it is very important to analyze emotions, to analyze how your brain works. And when students become inconsistent, we need to understand what is happening in their lives, especially in terms of how they're feeling, their emotions. Are you feeling under pressure lately? Are you under a lot of stress in your life, in your personal life, in professional life? Are you having a difficult moment at work or maybe with your family or maybe with your health, personal life? So external factors that are not connected with the English language will impact your English practice and will make you become more inconsistent. So in my case, for example, if I am under too much stress, too much pressure, I become inconsistent with my English practice, with my Italian practice. So, when that happens, I need to take a step back and work on myself, calming myself down. I do some NLP exercises to bring me back to my, to my real self, to being focused and balanced. I meditate, I do some NLP exercises, and gradually, I get back to my practice, I get back on track. So, in many cases, the students are very worried with the English. But you need to analyze your life, you know, life can be hard. Sometimes we have more stressful months compared to previous ones, compared to our everyday lives, we may have more stressful periods. So, it's important to work on ourselves too, working on the mind to help you become more focused. Because a happy mind, a happy life. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to share it with your friends. But other than that, I'll see you next time. Bye!